Going to Chicago, correspondent in Washington, D.C. There, and we stay in the next two and talk to uh, Ivan Eland. He's a senior fellow and director at the Center on Peace. Thanks for being with us. Good to see you tonight. What do you think prompted America's decision to deploy forces to Jordan? Is there a real danger of the conflict breaching the border, or is there more to it, do you think? Well, I think there is some danger. If we look at what happened in Turkey, you know, stray out. Artillery shells can go over, but that really doesn't threaten Turkey's security, and it probably wouldn't threaten Jordan's security. But I think this is a this is a part electoral. I think Mitt Romney, as your report indicated, has been criticizing Obama for not being not aiding the Syrian rebels enough. And there is talk about not only this force uh, maybe helping with a. Uh, uh, no-fly zone in that part of the country near the Jordanian border, but then, of course, the Turks would want one as well. So, uh, but of course, that's that's not. They haven't decided to do that, but there's talk. They're encouraging talk of that. I think so. Um, you know, that that plays into the election as well. So, I think part of this is electoral, and part of it is because of the stray shells going into Turkey. If it is the election rhetoric, uh, more so, do you expect the, the, the tone to change than after November? And if so, in which direction? Well, I think uh, after the election is over, of course, uh, Obama has been scared of the risk. You don't want to necessarily, unless you're way behind an election in, in the U.S., you don't want to start a war. Uh, you want to minimize the risk. But Obama is still in a good position for the election. I don't think he wants to risk that. Now, afterwards, who knows what would happen? Uh, he may be less uh, resistant to... Uh, to going in simply because he has he's already been reelected. On the other hand, he may not feel uh, that he has to uh, be tough enough to to uh, meet Romney's criticisms. So it could go either way. It depends on it, on his uh, his uh, inclination after the election. But I think at any rate, he has he's, he has much more flexibility after the election than before it. Will this posting of troops on the border of Jordan have any tangible effect on what's actually going on within Syria itself and the internal fighting there, or not? You think? Well, I don't think too much. They're there under the mask of helping refugees, but they're also on guard for any use of chemical weapons. And also, uh, you know, if, the, if uh, things get really bad in Syria and the chemical weapons are not secure, perhaps they would do a raid or something to, to safeguard those. Uh, so they're there for other purposes, I think. Uh, they're ostensibly there to help the refugees, but I think it's the, the real problem with any of this situation is, uh, but on both Turkey and Jordan, is that uh, there's a slippery slope. There's a camel's nose under the tent. Right now, the U.S. is saying, well, you know, we're just giving logistics to the rebels and also um, medical supplies and non-lethal communications equipment. And even that, of course, helps the rebels. But I think, you know, once you get, and if the rebels don't win, then, of course, uh, people say, well, what are you going to do next? So when you go up the up the uh, escalation chain of sanctions and then aiding the rebels and then uh, giving weapons to the rebels and then where does it stop uh, going in with uh, NATO troops or U.S. troops. Uh, so the, none of this has happened yet except for the uh, medical and, and uh, communications aid. But I think there's potential for escalation there after the election. Okay, Ivan, uh, we'll be covering it closely. Thanks for your thoughts tonight. Ivan Eland, Senior Fellow and Director of the uh, Center on Peace Life.